Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. So continuing the build, uh, we are on section number four, steering. And uh, the, some of the parts that um, I had ordered have come in, uh, specifically the thinner uh, version of this top deck. It's part number 301063. Uh, it is the T4 2001 graphite upper deck 1.6 millimeter and the idea is to soften the car a little bit just hold them up side by side as you can see the difference is not very much but it is there so now let's see we need uh, this is our initial kind of blow up drawing that shows us everything and there are some option parts here I'll just kind of touch on a couple of them um, Turnbuckles, I don't think are very relevant uh, the um, aluminum uh, plate uh, for dual servo saver um, I Really can't speak to that piece. They give you a very nice aluminum piece Um I assume the number eight is for eight millimeter versus 8.5. Uh, I'll do some reading and if I, if there's any specific information about this part and uh, versus this part and what the difference and benefits are, I'll, I'll let you know. But uh, from the drawing, it appears to be identical. So I uh, can't speak to that. Um, now they give us two different uh, servo arm options and i went ahead and ordered the aluminum ones but if you're on any kind of budget or if you you know if you've come down to several items you want to add i would make this one of your last choices because the stock arms are very sturdy i mean um this is an extremely hard plastic and this is one of the reasons that i really like and recommend x-ray products um, over all the other manufacturers that i have experience with they seem to do the most research into uh, different composites and they use a wide variety of plastics for each part every part on the car that is made up of plastic they examine it test it and choose the right mix because these are composites um, some of them have uh, carbon fiber and or graphite in them uh, and um, they've got several option parts i'll talk about later that are standard plastic versus graphite and and you can choose um, they you know are are going to give you a part here that is as stiff as can be it is not going to flex um, at this point, aluminum is almost more of an aesthetic choice versus going with the standard plastic because this, under normal driving conditions, is not going to experience even a fraction of a degree of altered state. It is not going to twist or flex or anything. It is, I mean, I, I'm pretty strong and I, I can't, you know, I, I think I would snap this before I would get it to, to curve. Um, and not that it's overly brittle in any way. I don't mean to imply that. Uh, it, it's just, you know, it's an extremely high quality piece. And if you compare the plastics that X-Ray uses to some of the really low budget kits, and I don't want to knock those. I mean, you know, some of these Chinese cars, for the money, you are getting a, a, a nice package. And they're great for beginners who are trying to get their foot in the door with the hobby and don't have the money to buy a separate radio and separate electronics and a separate kit. Um, at the same time, they are using very cheap plastics. It makes them easier for them to mold, easier for them to work with. They're less expensive because they're just using, they're not using a composite plastic. Um, and uh, so, you know, you get what you pay for. And x-rays are at the high end of the price point, um, but for the for what you get, it, it's really a striking difference. Um, I You could probably build this kit and not change anything based on improving strength and never notice a difference. Like you can replace 
uh, a lot of the steering and rear hubs and such with aluminum parts, I don't think you'd be able to tell the difference. I doubt even a pro driver could tell the difference between their graphite parts and aluminum parts as far as the way the car drives. Um, that's just an opinion. So um, if you, like I said, if you're on a trying to work your budget and you're like, okay, I've got the car, I, I wanna add this piece, I wanna add this option piece, um, but I also need this, this, and this. Um, I think one of the best ways you could spend money into this kit, other than its box stock kit, is a really good high-speed, high-torque steering servo. Um, that would do more for you than all the aluminum parts available, in my opinion. So you're talking in the realm of like $140, uh, like the servo I'm running. Um, and I was discussing this, uh, this issue uh, in the comments with uh, one of the viewers um, and uh, his budget only allowed him to go with a, uh, a lower cost servo, not for this kit, for a different one. And because um, I had recommended this specific servo to him and uh, you know, his budget required him to, to take a step down in, in quality and speed. Um, but as I'm saying, if, if you were gonna add a bunch of extra parts to this and then use a lower end servo, you'd be better off staying with just the parts that come with the kit, building it up straight up as is stock and getting a servo like this because this is one of the fastest servos on the market. And that's very important in reducing the, any lag time between the time you initiate a control at the wheel of your radio to the time that that is implemented by the front tires of the car. And these are down to like below a six thousandth of a second. Uh, at maximum voltage and even at 7.4 volts their mid voltage range you're still getting six thousandths of a second response time um, that's going to make a big difference in your ability to control the car how it feels to you the the quickness with which the vehicle reacts to your inputs um, so things to consider I'm sorry guys if sometimes I, I ramble on about stuff like this, but I'm trying to not just give you a build, I'm trying to pass on as much general knowledge about the hobby. And that's why I encourage many of you that are new or less experienced in the hobby to watch as many of my builds as you can sit there and tolerate, because I know some of them are quite long, but there's little bits of information in them that you might not otherwise get or know and that can really benefit you so um, yes it's in my best interest that you guys watch as many of my videos as possible at the same time I, I truly think I'm providing a value here uh, that if you want to race if you want to be you know involved in this hobby sport long term um, getting as much of that knowledge into your head if nothing else as food for thought to help you shape your own opinions I think would be a benefit so, um, into section four, uh, the first thing we're going to do is build turnbuckles. I'm going to do that off camera. Um, building turnbuckles is tedious and boring, and I've gone over the ins and outs of turnbuckles a thousand times. The main thing you want to do is, when you are working with your uh, steering and your camber links, um, you want to use you want to point them all in the same direction. So uh, this one would point this way, this one would point this way, that way. The They all turn in the same direction to loosen and tighten, expand or contract your turnbuckle links, your steering linkages, um, your, uh, your camber links. Um, that will make it much easier for you to tune. And if you do all of your cars that way, uh, off-road, on-road, buggies, trucks, cars, etc. Anytime you need to do tuning on your car, it just makes it so much easier that you can turn the wrench in a particular direction and you know that it's going to 
you know, all of them are going to contract or all of them are going to expand depending on which direction you're going. Um, that's the only real important thing I can pass on about turnbuckles. So on to the steering. Um, let me go ahead and uh, open this turn, uh, steering kit. Now, very nice thing, they provide us with fresh bearings. So if you were doing this as an upgrade uh, down the road, if you'd owned this car and driven it for some time, um, you're getting a fresh set of bearings along with these arms that you're swapping. So that's a, a bonus. And uh, just FYI, uh, part number 302525-K. Um, X-ray aluminum dual servos, servo saver arm black. And let's see, okay, tighten the screw gently but fully and then loosen one third turn so the composite dual servo saver moves freely. Okay, now that is for the plastic parts. We'll see if it applies to aluminum. I will certainly try. They have us attaching to the first of the outermost hole. And uh, that is slightly raised. So those are going to be positioned like so. And here we have our arm, which needs to be oriented okay with the bearings facing up and we need a pair of m3 by 8 flatheads which i have in titanium so i'm going to use those and is there anything else in the hardware department at the moment nope Okay, now we are definitely going to want, especially if we need to loosen these slightly, and I think that third of a turn is kind of going to be a flexible kind of thing. You're going to want to make these snug, but at the same time, you're going to want to make them um, make them move fully. So you might need to take a little artistic license with that one third of a turn, depending on the molding of your parts, etc. probably pass those through before putting on the Loctite. And since I don't want any Loctite to get on that bearing surface, I'm going to put my Loctite into the screw hole first instead of putting it on the screw itself. See, with the metal parts, you don't need the full third of a turn. You want to keep that loose. I'm not sure I got enough Loctite in there. That might have just been a bubble, because I don't see any Loctite on the threads. Again, this is a place where you'd probably want to use a little more than a little less. See, in that time, Loctite came through. See with the aluminum part you can tighten it down all the way and you've you've got a nice smooth action. I could probably use six millimeter screws with the aluminum but I don't believe I have any. Nope. Wait a minute. No those are fours. I've got eights and fours. No big deal. Okay, there we have a nice smooth action. And there's no real jiggling or wobbling. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, um, so we need the two four millimeter thread ball studs. Oh, 
I'm sorry, uh, one millimeter shims need to go in between there. And they give us these plastic shims. Um, those can crush under the screw um, and they will shrink in size and give you inaccurate settings from left to right. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in some one millimeter shims that are made of aluminum. Okay. Okay, now we are on to uh, step number 10. We're gonna use a five millimeter spacer, which should be this one right here. And we're gonna use the one of the two 10 millimeter ball studs right here. Those will go in right here. And then we're going to assemble our servo saver. Oh, that one bearing just keeps dropping out there. Okay, servo saver. Now, the first thing we need to do is figure out which one of these adapters, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to fit with the servo. They give us three, the primary manufacturers. So that gives you your spline count. <clears throat> excuse me. So see how this goes together. Okay. We take this piece and we have four concentric springs. Our smallest one has the little bent up ends. These can be a little difficult to put together, to say the least. Um, take some effort. Sometimes it's easier to put it in on this piece versus this piece. It depends on which one fits inside the other. Yeah, do it on this one. Because see, this piece right here, this barrel, is going to fit inside of this one. So if you try to do it, you know, put the metal pieces on here, the springs, you've got to try to squeeze them in between, you know, have this edge here of this barrel go in between the springs and this plastic part here. Okay, so, um, sorry I didn't record that. I was, did it while I was talking on the phone. I just put the springs on. It doesn't take a lot of effort to just squeeze them on one after the other. So once you've got this on, uh, this piece should snap in easily. Just like that. Now, that's interesting that this has splines on it. Is that the same? Not the size of the server or the size of this fitting. Okay, it is the fitting. Okay. So that's nice and easy. So before I do that, um, I need to do a little orientation here on the servo. Shouldn't have snapped that in yet. Okay, so... Um, First, I need to see how the servo positions. And they don't do 
do the electronics till way later, which is kind of odd that we're doing everything except putting the servo in place. Okay. So our servo faces with the, uh, the steering shaft facing outwards. So this is the front servo is going to be like this. So now I can center the servo and I know that this servo saver is going to point upwards. must be really low. Yeah, it's really quiet. I love these servos. Okay, it is centered. Getting one of these is just an essential tool for building RC cars or planes. They're only like $11. <clears throat> so... Back to step 10. I hate that when the splines are set up in such a way that it's off to one side or the other. This side, it's the least off. I can adjust that center point in programming. And let's see, there is a centerpiece goes on there and okay one servo saver in place now we need four millimeters of spacers and our second 10 millimeter ball stud. And again, I'm just gonna go into my spacers. I'm gonna pull a four millimeter spacer. Instead of going with a pair of twos. Top center hole. Now, I'd really like to put a bolt, a nut on the back here. Let's see, I've got an M3 bolt handy. I'm sure, I do. Uh, the idea bearing, being that it's going to lock this in place, it's not going to come unscrewed or loosen. Now, I don't want to use, uh, I, I would love to use a nylon lock nut, but there isn't enough thread sticking out to work with one. So I don't think that's worth using a lock nut on since it's not going to get in there anyway. I'll just use Loctite. Okay, there we go. One M3 nut. I'll just make sure that it indeed is an M3. Yep, screws right on. It's probably a 5.5. Yep. Okay, so get some Loctite on there. Now, that's not in the directions, but as long as it sticks through, I think it's a worthwhile thing to do. It's just, you know, it's one little nut, and it uh, doesn't add any substantial weight. Okay, so now we need these two standoffs. And... 
Now they have um, uh, aluminum dual servo saver screws, M3 by sevens. Those would uh, screw in on top of the um, of the bearings here, and uh, it removes excessive radial play. I'm not sure that's something worth upgrading to. Um, might be. I think I'll be fine with what I've got since I'm running the aluminum parts versus plastic. But we'll find out. So let's go ahead and screw those on. I need a pair of uh, M3x6 flatheads for below, which I don't have, so I'm going to go ahead and use eights unless they conflict. And then from above, I need a pair of M3x5 button heads. And I have sixes, so hopefully the two of those are not going to run into each other. Let's have a look. Okay, these are going to screw in from below. Okay, those run into the bottom of the thread right there. So those are too long. They won't fit. Let's see if these, how far this is threaded. I would have thought this would be threaded all the way through, but it's not. Okay, these go right down to the top, so the sixes will be fine. I may need to use the steel screws for below. I've got those. Let's see. I think there's going to be enough thread here on these shorter screws. Yeah, that's good. That's at least three to four millimeters because these are flat heads. So yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use titanium hardware top and bottom. I'm sure that you guys are probably just using the stock stuff. That's fine. Um, you know, I have the titanium hardware, so I'm using it. And especially down low, like on the bottom of the chassis, it it's not as big a deal. Um, it's better for the, the higher hardware. Um, and it does accumulate. When you've got, you know, two or three screws, it's not, it doesn't seem like a lot of weight. But when you take 30 screws and you put them on the scale and then you take 30 screws of the same size in titanium and put them on the scale, it, it's a really tangible difference and it, it can affect the performance of the car. And the less weight you have up high, the less, uh, the lower the center of gravity is for the vehicle overall. Um, and that helps handling and uh, control. So now nice thing with these is they are uh, flat spotted on two sides. So you can put a wrench on these and hold them. It doesn't matter uh, what direction they're pointing. So I would point them so the flat spots are forward and rear so you can have a wrench from the side. Let's see what size these are. I think they're like a four millimeter maybe. Yep, four millimeters it is. So first thing we want to do is mount these. I'm just getting them snug so I've got them in place and then I'll put a wrench below and above Now, because of how tight a space this is, I'm going to go ahead, pause the video, I'm going to do the turnbuckles, and snap them onto this steering assembly as shown here in the directions, and then attach these. So, I'll be back in a moment with turnbuckles. One thing I want to point out about the turnbuckles is we have two different types of eyelets, and 
the difference is in their length. Use these for the outer steering arms or steering turnbuckles and use these for the short one that connects the servo to the steering assembly. Okay, turnbuckles are assembled. Another thing I'd like to point out, um, in, the, uh, in the directions they give us lengths to set your turnbuckles to, I generally don't bother uh, with that. The, 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 those lengths are rarely exactly what you're gonna want anyway. You're gonna need to tune the car. And while they may be a ballpark, you really don't need it um, because you're going to be putting this car on, uh, you know, on a flat surface. Chances are you're going to be using a truing set and you're going to be, uh, you know, adjusting these things properly. And so it doesn't matter that they're even close during the assembly because you've got, you're going to have to adjust everything later anyway. Um, so I usually just make sure that as much threads are in on each side so that they're equal and then not worry about it from there. Uh, do it all on the tuning table. Now there's one thing I forgot to do and that is to put a, the spacers in here. This one wants to come out the top anyway, so I'll just do it that way. Um, hopefully these are, are the right size for the metal ones. Um, these little aluminum spacers here are easy to drop. Uh, no, they are designed to fit in on the reeses of each of the two bearings. And that uh, basically lets the two bearings be clamped together at the Reese and that means that the outer bearing isn't being you're not you know clamping the ball bearings and binding up the bearing uh, so that's why those are there so easy enough to just slide in one bearing drop in the spacer they will get centered up when you assemble everything in fact it's probably even easier uh, because sometimes getting everything lined up can be uh, a little harder than it would look. Um, the easiest way to do this and not have any problems is to put in the lower two bearings first. Okay. Get our steering mechanism in place. And I'm sorry, I did the top bearing here. Get that out. Okay, so and that bearing just loves dropping off. Okay, so get the first arm on. Get the second arm on. Okay, drop the spacer onto the standoffs and then push in the top bearing from above. And that way you don't have to worry about that spacer getting lined up for the standoff. <clears throat> Sorry if my voice is a little off today. Don't over tighten, let the Loctite do the work for you. But, because <clears throat> you don't wanna deform that standoff at all, or excuse me, the uh, spacer. Okay, everything is good to go. And we have a very smooth steering action without any kind of play. So that's great.
Okay, uh, so now we're moving to the top deck. Okay, um, this piece right here, the underside of it is kind of ellipse shaped. That is to fit into this slot here. But I am not going to be using that because I am going for a soft setup. This provides a connection from this post here on the motor mount. And <clears throat> I am going to keep this because if I ever decide to start running this on a carpet track, um, I'm going to want that to stiffen things up. But for now, I'm going to leave that off altogether. There's three possible settings. You can use a, uh, a spacer with a nut, and what that does is it just puts a spacer in between here, so it kind of helps keep this lined up, but it doesn't anchor it. You can use this piece with a screw, and that clamps the deck to the motor mount solidly and provides a, a direct link at the middle of the chassis, or the rear end of the chassis. Um, or you can use nothing, and that's where I'm going. So we can just slide this piece in here. Got to be careful with it. Okay, and now we need eight screws, and those are all going to be, I assume they're the same size as here, M3 by 6s. So all of these are going to need a little bit of Loctite, and we don't want to tighten them down until we've got all of them in place. Now, it's interesting that they give us, we've got three holes on these bulkheads, front and rear, and in the rear on this plate, we have three holes, not just four. The front, we have four, but we're only using four screws in the rear. I wonder if there's a, a reason for that. Oh well, not going to worry about it. Don't even snug these down until you've got all four of them in place. You don't want to add any tweak to the chassis before we're even built. Tweak is when things are misaligned and so the car is kind of bent. And it can be very subtle, and it manifests itself in unpredictable steering, and it can be very hard to diagnose and figure out what's going on. Now, you couldn't put four, three screws on either side back there anyway. The button heads would all be... Uh, getting in each other's way. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just kind of flex the chassis a little bit. Wiggle this piece front and rear, and now it should be centered nicely on all the screws. I'm going to start tightening. Okay, so now. You know, as you can see, if I try to like flex the chassis a little bit, you can get a little bit of, of variance here, but not a lot. Um, and as you can see, that can bounce up and down. So even without that screw and everything I've done to loosen this, it's still pretty solid.
I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like and please subscribe to my channel. If you click the bell icon, you'll receive notifications every time I launch a new video. Thank you for watching.